join me as we talk all things true crime. Made contact and shattered. Where are your kids? They've been missing for four months. You have nothing to say? You're over here in Hawaii? Chad, where are Lori's kids? Four were stabbed multiple times and were likely asleep during the attack. Some had defensive wounds. Most of them had just like one that was the lethal uh, stab wound. Hi, everybody. Thank you for being here. This is episode five in our Chris Watts review of the case. The Enigma is what we've titled it. And we'll be looking through Shanann's office in the body cam in this episode. I'm waiting for CDT to get here. She's in no, I told her no rush. And she'll be here momentarily. In the meantime, I figured I would let you guys know if you're looking for more true crime and Watts content, she is on TikTok. So give her a follow. I've got the link in the description box and here in chat. And thank you, Delaney, for being a member for 21 months and gifting five memberships. Welcome to all the members. And thank you again, Delaney. I really appreciate that and all your support for so long. And same with you, Lambsbond007. Thank you for gifting memberships. Thanks, everyone, for being here. Hi, Tammy Wells, Sue, Florida Bass Fishing, Unravel. Good to see you. Another true crime um, Watts channel there if you want to follow more. Definitely recommend. And hi, Terry, Tony, and Sherry. Combine the two names. Sorry, guys. Um, chat is going quicker than my finger can move. Sorry. And hello, Princess Megan Elsa. Anyways, so we are reviewing the case. People have been wondering why, Be mainly because we hit like a million views for my documentary. People wanted me to do another one. I figured this would be another way to kind of go through things without having to edit <laughs> as much for a documentary. Plus our Facebook group, which is also linked in the description box based around this case. It's called Chris Watts did not act alone. It's a private discussion group. So when you join there, um, it's just a private community. We actually just hit 51 K members. And I think some people in chat might be coming from that group. So while we're mentioning the group, there's a lot of stuff that we discussed in these live streams that get, dig even deeper in the group. Today, let me share my screen. In the footage, we're discussing, hi, Nicole, and everyone else who is joining. If you guys could hit the thumbs up button, that'd be greatly appreciated as well. Um, so her office. Um, in, in talking about her office, I think that we also need to just review another fact that we discussed in the previous episodes about the Viven security alerts and um, control panel, just every information that was gathered from that Viven security system that the Watts family has, has been sealed and it's never been given fully to the public. Hello, Seth, good to see you. Um, so the thing is we have little bits and pieces from their Viven security alert in the discovery but those alerts are never really explained further. Um, we do have Chris kind of mentioning the alerts and we talked through them in the previous episode um, about how he was saying that the garage door let him know, the alert system let him know that the garage door was left open. But when Nicole Atkinson went there, he told the cops, more than one officer, that when she got there, it was closed. So again, this is sort of a theory where we speculate, since I believe others are involved, that maybe he indirectly was trying to throw them under the bus or lean the investigation into looking into more of like, why would that happen? You know, obviously somebody shut the garage and if it wasn't you because you went to work and you got the alert that it was kept open, you know, who was it? Hello, Kelly. Good to see you. I <laughs> started my camera. But hello, everybody. <laughs> I missed it. <laughs> Good to see you and everybody in chat. Hello. <laughs> All right. So, you know, we were just talking about um, 
just the case in general and how you're going to be covering it on TikTok for those who want to join you over there. There's going to be other true crime. And the thing too, is there's other avenues on TikTok that you guys don't have to just stick to the realm of true crime. There's shopping and vlogs that Kelly does too. And just any um, motivational speaking stuff on there too, on different accounts. So it just gives you a good balance. If you guys follow um, her on TikTok, you can fall down those rabbit holes too. But I was referring to our Facebook group that we have based on this case solely and her office specifically. We have a whole post on it. Um, we've got multiple posts on it. And I just figured I would I would pick one and kind of read through the comments for a minute. And then I wanted to play the Vivint um, video that I did three years ago about the Vivint system and, you know, the fact that they've sealed the entire, every little thing that happened that could have been cataloged. Now we do know he turned off some of the system at times and the Wi-Fi, um, probably so things weren't really tracked. And hello, Eddie, thank you for becoming a member and welcome to the family. So I don't know, what are your thoughts about why they kind of sealed the Vivint alerts and why her office looks the way it is? I definitely feel like there's a motive as to why they have sealed that and they don't, you know, they haven't released it. Um, as far as the office, I do think it's very odd. Now, I did have a question for you and then anybody in chat. Was it ever asked in interviews if it was normal that her office was messy? Like that was something I was trying to remember before the live. If it was ever asked um, to Chris or N.A. or her parents even if it was normal for her office to be messy. Because it definitely does seem out of place. All I know is I really, Tammy says, and I know she studied the case. She said, I've never heard them ask. Um, I, I'm thinking even in the prison interview, they kind of focused more on the basement and in the, I don't know if it was the last episode we did on this, but remember even Coonrod, I think it was when they were pointing out like that little spot in the stair area where they, he touched it with his finger and he was like, the house doesn't look, nothing looks out of place, no forced entry. And it's like with how neat everything is like they showed the kitchen here we know that their pantry was incredibly neat we know their both their closets with their clothes and shoes were incredibly neat um the children's room and even the laundry room i mean everything was absolutely in its place in a way that was just like wow this is insanely like categorized and organized i mean color coded and stuff too um so I just don't really buy the whole, like somebody in one of the comments in our post about it was like, everybody has that one room that's kind of the throw all. I just don't see Shanann and Chris like allowing that specifically because she had a, um, a vlog that she did for Thrive. And I think it was a Facebook live. And she was like, oh, my office is a mess. And she was kind of cleaning it and talking. And it was way more neat than it is here. And it wasn't even a mess at all. Like, I wouldn't classify it as a mess. Uh, and she thought that that was a mess. So I just feel like she would never allow it to get to the, the way that it looked, even the closet of the office. So the comments in our Facebook group, and you guys join our group so you can see more stuff that we talk about, says, someone was definitely looking for something. And somebody else says, either someone was desperately trying to find something, or maybe it was in the plan to look like a home evasion or burglary. Either way, it's not normal compared to the rest of the house. And somebody asked, whose cell phones are those? Someone definitely was trying to look or find something important, wonder who they are. I'm OCD like Shanann, and there's no way she would leave her office like that all the time. She works from home to... She keeps most things very organized, so I find it really hard to believe her office was messy. I can see maybe her closet of the office with all the toys and miscellaneous stuff, but not her desk and office. Other people are agreeing with that. Um, other people have said that somebody was frantically looking for a clue to the phone password because, remember, he didn't know the new passcode. Some people said perhaps looking for life insurance, paperwork, bank account information, 
Somebody said, I don't believe Shanann's office was left like this by her. She posted a video just before going to Arizona saying she had spring cleaned the entire house and had done a few loads of washing. So I wouldn't think she would skip over the office and leave it in that state. There are piles and piles of stuff, bags and items that clearly have been there for a while, junk piled up. If someone was looking for something, things would be in disarray, books, papers, toys piled up. Shanann might have been OCD, but this was obviously her junk room. It makes sense that all this was because she was about presenting a perfect image. And then people said, I don't think that's true. It's just not like her to have her desk that way. And, and it just goes on. A lot of people saying the insurance, probably looking for life insurance policies. Um, what are your thoughts? And I'll check with chat. Um, I think it's out of the ordinary as well. And again, I've seen that too, like through studying the case, everyone's like, well, everyone has that one room. Some people actually work better when it's disorganized, but I just don't think that that is the case here. Like you said, when you look at the rest of the house, the closet, maybe, but even that, I think that there is something more to it. And again, the fact that it just happens to be her office where important personal documents would be kept absolutely leads me to think that there was something more going on there. And I do wish that they had asked, like, I feel like that would have been a great question to ask Chris, to ask N.A., to ask Sandy. Um, but yeah, people are saying that they don't remember that being asked. So that's very telling. And remember when our last episode, we were kind of discussing how it seemed like the arriving officer was sort of leaning towards and like defending Chris in ways, like even when Nicole Atkinson was like alerted by whatever that was in the blood area or in the stair area. And yeah. He was like, and so when he said nothing seemed out of place, to him and no forced entry. Like I get it, no forced entry, but at the same time, that office was sort of stuck out like a sore thumb. I mean, that and the the sheets laying on the floor in the bedroom. And it was just odd that he was basically saying everything looked kind of normal to him. Um, but then we know when the dog handler goes in the next day, she says something about it being freakishly clean, doesn't she? Right. And then didn't Jane, while she was in the office, suddenly out of nowhere mention, does anybody use marijuana? That was interesting to me, too. Like, were people in there that smelled like that and it didn't smell like that in the rest of the home? Yeah. And some people have theorized, even in that thread in our group, about all the uh, maybe the the girls were being held in there and entertained by somebody in there while other things were taking place, like Shanann was being carried down or whatever. Um, and so people just kind of were wondering if like, and that just leads me to think like whoever was in there, like maybe they had marijuana on them or in a baggie or something. And it that's where it was sort of left, you know? Exactly. But it, just, it just seems like for the most part, besides that one comment, basically saying everyone's got that throw for all room, everyone kind of is seeing this as being very odd. And we did a whole live stream on your channel about whether or not he, he packed the backpacks and in her office, we find in the corner, the kids backpacks that we believe had, you know, stuff hanging out of it and stuff right outside of it. Perhaps they had looked in the backpacks for whatever they were ransacking for or whatever but it seems, and in my opinion, still, I don't know if yours is the same, that he did, there was evidence of possibly those backpacks were packed for school. Yeah. Or, or a day trip. Again, like if they weren't meant to go to school that day, it seems like there was some stuff that was like packed there. I agree. I'm, you know, anxious to look back at it. It has been so long, but the backpacks, from my memory, from my recollection, were definitely there. And it had stuff around them. They looked like they had stuff in them. So I wished, again, like that would have been something that would be nice to know. Were the backpacks packed? Was their lunches packed? Did he do what Shanann had asked him to do with the change of clothes? Like, for sure. I think it does look like it, though, from what we can tell. But we've never got to see inside or had that documented. 
Right. No answer to that and no answer to why everything else is so spick and span except the office. So let's just switch up the screen for a second, review a little bit of vivid information because it is valid and um, it's, it's pertinent information and understanding things that are taking place with this body cam footage that we're watching because We've seen in other episodes, Chris does mention to people there that, you know, some of the alerts were strange, but then of course he'll throw in like, but it had been acting strange for a while, remember? And it's like, come on, like, which is it? Right, exactly. And then they never really, you know, prod him on that. Like, well, wait, what do you, can you tell us like more about how it's acting strange? Like it's all, the whole case is glossed over. And Florida Bass Fishing asked earlier if, if we had proof that um, he was turning off their Wi-Fi. I believe there was evidence of that. Yeah, and remember those DOS or DOS attacks? That's mentioned somewhere in the discovery. And I know we talked about that a little bit. We never really went too deeply into it. Um, but there was definitely some stuff going on with their Wi-Fi or router, whatever. Yeah, for sure. Some of this information, again, this is three years ago. The facts remain the same, but as far as the garage door, I still am uncertain which door it was because in a previous Christmas live stream that Shanann does, she opens the garage door to get her phone and you hear the garage door alert saying garage door open. And when you have little kids, you need to kind of know, especially for that door that goes to the front street, you know, if that's opening, if that's closing, if it's staying open. And then the other thing that we know is like the punch pad for their big main garage door didn't work. So that was broke. However, when Chris left, some alert in the garage said that it was open. I believe it's like the, the big door. So it's always been questioned. Did somebody walk out that garage door? and then shut it like as they're walking out did they shut it and then leave out the back so that's always been kind of up in the air because we we know Nate's camera system has a delay like it's a few seconds delay would it have stayed on long enough to catch somebody walking out the front because we didn't see Shanann get out of at Nicole Atkinson's car and walk up to the um the stairs so it's always it's all up in the air on like which garage door it was and you guys let me know your thoughts which garage door do you think it was that was um, the one in? Well, let's watch this first. The garage door of the residence was checked. It did not open from the outside, but did open and close from within. Christopher gave us consent to check Shanann's phone. It had an alert which stated the garage door was opened at 1242. Detective Baumhover took the phone to the Frederick Police Department. Christopher showed me his phone, which shows alarm times when the doors are open. It's so I just have to pause it real quick. So Shanann's phone which we know that we hear the inside interior garage door say garage door open, garage door closed. So I'm like interest. I'm leaning towards that just being the interior one, just based off of us knowing that that alert goes off even in person. But again, uh, I'm refreshing Same. myself, you know, because. Same. And then I was going to say that it even makes me think even more possibly because the fact that it didn't say it once police were there, it's like, did somebody turn it off? Um, but yeah, I lean towards it being the garage door between the garage and the house, like not the main one to the outside. So the fact that Chris got an alert on his phone, which we don't even have much of Chris's phone um, evidence or anything, He's saying that when he left in the morning, so the, the one that he got is a separate alert from this. So this one, I'm feeling like it's the interior door. The one that he gets that says your garage door was left open. I'm feeling like that was his big door because he even says when Nicole Atkinson got there, it was closed. Yes. 
So where is, I don't think we ever hear about that alert from Shanann's phone. Mm -mm. I don't think so either. Sent an alarm at about the same time stating he had left the garage door open. Christopher told me at least three times, which I felt was unusual. Shanann's phone. So just like we're thinking it's unusual that Chris has told Baumhover saying it, we seen on camera him tell the heavier set guy that it was it was uh, he got that alert, and we, and we know that he told Coonrod that he got that alert. So he has told three officers or two officers and one detective that you know that took place that he got an alert. It was left open, but it was shut when Nicole Atkinson got there, and the. Detective on the scene is noting that it was unusual to him that Chris is reiterating that. So interesting. Phone showed in an alert at 1242 for the garage door, which is the only way someone could leave the residence. So that if it's saying that the 1242 alert is to the garage door, which is the only way for someone to leave the residence, and it's not the interior. Right. I'm a little hung up on that because why couldn't somebody have left the residence via the front door or out the back patio door? Like, why am I missing something? That's the first time I've really thought about that. Like, why is he saying that that would, been, would have been the only way? Yeah. Hmm. Because... Yeah. <laughs> because then, yeah, I'm with you. Like, that would have been more likely the big door, right? Right. And then it's like, so then Nate's, but Nate's camera didn't catch it because it's got that delay. Right. And then other people say, well, this is Nicole Atkinson and her son setting it off. But from what this is saying, it, it was it wasn't just Jimmy didn't um, messed with. It was wide open to enough to l get the alert and to, for them to say that it's an e exit point. Exactly. And most doors now, like a traditional garage door will sh stop if you try to run under it. Yeah, the, the interior garage door did have an alert. I can pull up the video um, as we play more of this, but either way, it's it's making me think like now it's the big door. So, hmm. I called him at 12.27. And I called him twice, he didn't answer, and then I called again. Okay. And that, I mean, we had that conversation. And that's when you said that they were going on a play, play date. And I was like, but I was like, okay, but like, if they're on a play date, how'd she get him there? Because yeah. they're both in car seats. Right. He's like, well, a friend must have picked him up or something. He's like, I don't know. He's like, I'm busy and I'm at work. He's like, and because I was messing with the door. I set off the alarm system, so they called him at work, and he's like, are you messing with the door? I said, yeah, I tried to get in your house because I'm worried about your wife, and he was like, "She's." he's like, she's on a place, you know, so I, I'm at work. He's like, I'll try and contact her, and he hung up. So messing with the door set off an alarm. That's not the same as this 1242 garage door open alert, I feel. Right, and she hasn't specifically now, okay, again, trying to remember what she just said could she have been talking about the front door because again she said you know she knew the code but the um the lock at the top was on that frank had installed so could it have been the front door at this point or am i way off i mean it's not really specific like i feel like it she could be saying, I, I couldn't get into the garage. So then, you know what I mean? And then she kind of like goes to the front door. Right. Because if you know, we know that the code pad for the garage door, or I guess doors was broken. So then was she trying to physically lift the garage door? Was she able to get it up a little bit? And that was setting off the code? Or is she just talking about the front door 
where she knew the code, but she couldn't get past the lock on it. Yeah, that's the thing about, and, and again, even in this comment section of this video, there's so much <laughs> debate on, well, that was like her life 360 puts her at the house. So it was her. And um, I don't know. It's, it's, I feel like it could go either way. Cause I just feel like in 2018, from the experience I had with life 360 and what we knew about it very early on in the case, not currently, I feel like it, of course, with everything, it just gets better over time with technology, but it was still kind of leaving a window of like it possibly not being Nicole Atkinson that set off the alarm. Just saying like, cause we don't know a hundred percent either way, but it, it sort of seemed like it was in the window of time that she was away from the house. Yeah. So then I went and locked the front door and my son was messing with the garage door and I told him to stop it. So, yeah, like you said, she goes to the front door, knows the punch code, but can't get in because it has a latch. She just said, so then I locked the front door. So she was, in my opinion, kind of explaining her going through the front and setting off the alarm. Right. And so when she says she locked the front door, I wonder if that just means she clicked it and then maybe re-entered the code to lock it. But then, yeah, she does go on to say that Nick... Her son was messing with the garage door as well. And he set the alarm off again. And then Chris called again and said, are you still at my house? And I told him no, because we were leaving. But um, we left because I'm like, okay, well, let's go see if she went to her doctor's appointment. Because I'm trying to like, like maybe, I don't know, maybe she did go on a play date. Who knows? Um, so I drove to the doctor's office because I doctor there too. And I know they're not supposed to give out personal information. They didn't give out personal information. Like I, I'm seeing, I know the whole people laws and all of that. I just walked up to him and I said, I know you're not supposed to tell me this. I get it. I don't need other information. I just need to know if she and not showed up for a doctor's appointment. And the lady looked at me and I was like, please, I just need to know if I need to be concerned. And if she didn't show up for that appointment. Side note, sorry. Those windows right underneath on the porch, right where the um, that kind of couch type of thing is on their porch, he never once like picked them up to see if they were open or not. Exactly. That's why it's frustrating in the notes when it says whatever, you know, all um, windows were locked. Obviously, we're not talking about the ones you would need a ladder to get to, but the ones that you could try to pick up, he did not try to pick them all up according to the body cam. Right. I mean, yeah. And we notice that that cushion on the front porch kind of gets moved too, like in different footage, right? Yeah. Like if I remember correctly, way. yeah, I, I do believe I'd have to double check, but yeah, I do feel like it was shifted. And then isn't there a bag on there? And I don't know, someone said that maybe that was the bird. I can't remember. Yeah, there was like a tied up plastic bag there as well. Yeah. And talk of a dead bird in their front. So just really weird. But um, and again, I'm not even saying that a perpetrator could have gone through the front because people would say, like, why would that? But just saying for the sake of the, the argument of that Nicole Atkinson and her son made entry into the house. Like, what if they went through that window? You know what I mean? Because we exactly. wonder that. It's just, it's little things that it's like, if we knew if those windows were locked or not, like we wouldn't have certain questions. Like if they were unlocked then be like, hmm, that's even more like, oh, somebody easily could have gone in there to see if she was okay or whatever. And either way, just a whole other tangent, but. And then again, if this had gone to trial, because that was one comment that I replied to like, oh, so you think if it had gone to trial, we, it would have been honest or we would have gotten all the truth. Like, no, <laughs> but defense attorneys would have picked apart the notes. They would have dissected the body cam. Like these questions would have been raised and Kootenrod would have been on the stand. There would have been witnesses on the stand, et cetera, talking about this. A lot more information would have come out. More evidence would have been processed. There would yeah. have been cross-examinations. Like it would have been a completely different amount and type of information that we have. 
like even fingerprints around certain windows. I don't know if we're ever even done, you know, and uh, I just wanted to welcome everyone who's joined us since we started, including Roxanne and everyone else joining. Thanks for being here. But yeah, it's just, and that's the thing too, is like, who's to say that we would have gotten the truth, um, even if it did go to trial, because as lawyers have even said themselves, you know, they're telling a story up there. The prosecution and the defense have their own stories and it's up to the jury to decide which way that they believe is closest to the truth, you know, and the Watts family has even said that after reading through discovery, they had nothing but a theory. So it's just, I'm not even sure if this went to trial, we would even be satisfied because we've been saying for so long, like maybe if we got a trial, we'd, we'd get more answers. But now I'm just feeling like, well, I feel like whatever was going to be painted just probably wouldn't be anywhere near the truth anyways. And we would still kind of be wondering like, why did this happen? More so with the fact of like people who seem to look like they're involved circumstantially, like we're never looked at um, seriously. I know I need to be concerned. And she told me she didn't show up for the appointment. Yeah. What time were you at the doctor's office? Do you remember? Well, as I called, Chris at 11 or 12.27 is probably like 15 minutes from their house. I can give you the address of the doctor's office. Yeah, you know what? It's 6, yeah, because I go there all the time. It's 651 Mitchell Way. It is in St. Mary, Colorado. <clears throat> Do you think you're there? One o'clock ish, maybe. Um, let's see. Cassie called me at when I was leaving there and I was heading back at twelve forty. So yeah. So the Vivin alert is for what twelve forty two, and she's at the doctor's office texting Cassie or calling Cassie at 1240. And they're further away than two yes, minutes. Exactly. And That's huge to me. <laughs> yeah. I mean that, but people argue that, you know, this or that. And hello, Mel Mac and everyone else. Johnny, good to see you guys. So I don't know. Chat, what are you guys thinking? I'd say around 1230, 1240. Because okay. I got two cold phone calls from our friends because they both wanted to know what was going on. Okay. So you think it's about 15 minutes between their house and the doctor's office. Mm -hmm. So we call it 1245. Would that be accurate, I think? Possibly, yeah. Okay. I'll call it about 1240 to 1245. Okay. Does that sound okay. accurate to you? I yeah, cool. well, I left the house. I When I called Chris, was when I left the house shortly thereafter, and that was at 1227. So. Okay. I don't want to put words in your mouth. No, I know. So then after the doctor's office, I was like, okay, something's seriously wrong. So, because I've been in contact with Cassie and Christina all morning, because these are people that would normally talk to her every day. Um, I called them. I'm like, what do I do? Chris said she's with a friend. And they were both like, go back to the house and call the cops. So then I did. I drove back to the house and I called Chris again. I said, I'm going back to why I texted Shanann again. I don't mean to jump around. That's okay. I'm with you. <laughs> There's just, I don't, I don't get it. Sunday. I texted her. This is when I left the doctor's office okay. at 1247. I texted her, I said, I've been to your house. You won't open the door. Your alarm's set. Your shoes are sitting inside. Your car's home. I'm very concerned about you right now. I need you to text me or call me. I just want to know you're okay. If you don't want to talk to nobody, you don't want to be around anybody, I get it. It's fine. I just need to know you're okay. And she didn't respond. So I was driving back to her house at that point. Okay. I feel like when I made this video, Florida Bass, that was sort of my, that's how I feel, that the vivid alert 
maybe when somebody, MK possibly, snuck out of the house right after Nicole Atkinson went to Shanann's doctor's office. Yeah. I think that that's a very, um, trying to think of the right word, natural assumption based on the little bit of evidence we have. And again, maybe if we had more, we'd be like, okay, no, that's not what happened. But just going off the very little bit that we have and the alert when nobody was allegedly there, I mean, there is something to that. And, and we, I'm right there with you. <laughs> and we have Baumhofer's own notes and statements and thoughts at the time. And he said that Chris kept mentioning this little thing about the doors and, and the vivants being odd. And he thought it was odd and that this was the only exit from the house at that point. So it's seeming like through his notes, you could come to the conclusion that he felt something, somebody had exited at that point. Yeah. Did you look on there and it's like 
The only thing that I saw that was really strange was that uh, when I left, it said uh, the garage door stayed open. And now, so if that was on there at five, whatever, in the morning, mm -hmm. right, wouldn't the other stuff still be there too that happened after? Like if there was motion in the living room or the basement or whatever? It's just been the only thing. There was like a basement door left open and garage door left open. So when was the basement door left open? It was about the same time. 527? Yeah, it was like, like within a minute. And then what was the other one, did you say? That garage door left open. Hmm. Was the basement door open when you went back? Not that I remember. Like when I got there, everything was shut. Garage door was shut, basement door was shut. Hmm. What, like, you go out to the basement, like, uh, the basement walk out? No. Oh. It's a garden level. Okay. So there's, like, the windows. I mean, it, it, you, can, you can see the backyard. It's not like one of the ones that's, like, a normal one where it's, like, a deep like a deep dive, like where you can't, we have to look up to see like the, the, the level of the ground. Well, what's the basement door then? I guess I'm... Oh, so the basement door is, so like when you walk in the, like you walk into the house through the garage, and then as you're walking to the living room, you take a right, and then that's the basement door that leads down in the basement. Oh, so that door has an alarm? That has a sensor that tells you when it's open, because you can, since it's like our level basement, the windows, I mean, you could, I mean, you can walk, you can walk into the, like the the backyard and you can open a window. You just you don't have to dip down. You just open a window and you can walk in. Type of thing. So there's an alarm on the there's interior little, there's, door because yeah. because like you could I mean you can the trigger came in yeah the, the window yeah like stuff like that. Okay. Okay. And that one went off too. Like yeah. was that before the garage or after the garage? Which I think one it was, was one was a five twenty six. One was a five twenty seven. I think the 527 one was the garage and the 526 was the basement left open. Hmm. Do you get those a lot? Or do you guys do you guys even hang out in the basement usually or? I'm usually down there just to like work out, but I didn't work out that morning. So like I'm, it definitely wasn't open when I left. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sorry. I'm off track. Um, You're fine. So she, the, the ring doorbell could go to your phone. Like, how do you get log into that system? Your, it's just an app. It's just an app. What, what is that app called? Yeah. And does she have that app as well? Yeah. Okay. She should be on the phone. You mind if I look around? All right, just a little refresh from one of my first videos, but still really good look over of what goes on um, with that Vivint alert that has been sealed. We don't see the complete control panel or have explanations for these alerts that went off that were being brought to the officer's attentions. Um, but yeah, let me just get, pull up her office and, and kind of look through and see what we were talking about earlier, how it looked like they were looking for something. Oh yeah, that's what I wanted to show you, Kelly. So just right there, right when this starts, an officer, I think it's Coonrod's, I, I can't remember. Hold on. This guy's body cam footage kind of just stops right when he gets to the office. And then it switches to this other guy's. I don't know if it's the, the copy that I have of this video or what. Um, if anyone has seen like further beyond this guy's body cam footage, I was just curious why as soon as it gets to her office, it switches to the other officer's 
body cam footage of the office and stuff. So I don't know if like maybe something was redacted. I don't know. That's a good question. I wonder, or I know some of these, like people have spliced them together. So they've taken like coon rods and then those other two that show up and like kind of put them together. But it still could be that the reason it skipped is because it stopped, you know? Yeah. I mean, that would that make sense. If anyone does like a Freedom of Information Act or requests the files again, like let me know if, if this goes beyond the format that I'm about to show you, basically. Very neat for having two little kids. Very neat for having two little kids. And yet it just brings up even more red flags then than why was the office in the state that it was found in. Who's got asthma? I don't know. Kids need medication too, and apparently they didn't. She didn't take their medication either. Celeste, this is all the medication. Celeste, the kid. Mm-hmm. That's albuterol for a nebulizer. for an inhaler. <laughs> and was there a little couch in the office too? Like going back to the theory that maybe somebody there was entertaining the children in the office and that's why the it was the way it was even with the toys in the closet looking the way it was. Uh, maybe they were just hanging out like in that little couch, you know? Yeah, I'm pretty sure there was or like, yeah, some kind of little like soft chairs for kids. Yeah. And I agree, Tony almost looks too neat except the office.
Now over in the right, you can see, a, we realized um, together a while ago that there were car seats there. And we believe it was the car seats that Chris had asked, or Shanann had asked Chris to swap out for Bella because she was getting too big for one, right? Yeah. To my memory, yeah, there's definitely car seats. And she did ask him to do something with the car seats. And people have interpreted that as like, see, he didn't plan on doing anything with them because he didn't switch out the car seats for her. And I get that view, but I, to play devil's advocate, I could also say that, or, cause we know that he, through the discovery that he was searching on a smaller, an SUV like the Lexus, but not a Lexus, but the same class in Audi. And he was looking at them randomly. Um, I think a few days before the murders, maybe the day before. I can't remember exactly, but I think it was August. And everyone was wondering like why, you know, and and I think that it's possible that maybe he didn't put the, because I don't think the kids were in his plan personally. Um, and I feel like maybe he didn't put the car seat in there because he was going to put it into this new Audi that he was going to buy. And the Lexus was going to be, you know, tied to the explosion possibly. Yeah, and I'm just looking in the discovery for when he Googled Aldi because now I'm really curious, so I'll let you know. <laughs> okay, thanks. Looking at this again and, and just comparing it so many times, they spend a lot of time in her office, like in comparison to kind of other areas. Agree. And I wonder if it is because it was such a mess is why they spent so much time. Because in the other areas of the house, like you can easily see each item, like where it is, it's organized, I guess, other than the basement. But um, yeah, it does make me wonder like, were they kind of trying to take in everything that they were seeing in there? Yeah. And like, I never really felt that way until like reviewing it again. And I'm like, compared to other rooms, it seems like a lot of office footage and different angles, different body cams. Do you want an ID? Yeah. yeah. We already got here. Nothing in the car. So for whatever reason, like you said, the Vivint alert system is off. Um, we don't know. I, I'm sure it might say specifically like when it was going on and off. I don't know on the top of my head. But that door that he just opened to go into the garage does have an alert. Um, that can be found in her Christmas video here. I got the phone so I can get pictures. Hold, please. My husband's a genius. Doesn't listen. Oh, it's cold. Come on. So that just brings us back to these whole alerts going off. And, you know, this... Some of the alerts with the garages could easily be explained if we had the Vivint records and we wouldn't be wondering, is that, does that mean the big one? Does that mean the interior one? I mean, it all comes into play and all of that would have been laid out right in front of the jury. And maybe even somebody from Vivint would have gone there and, and explained what they meant, you know, because they had that in Sna the Snapchat expert in the Murdoch murder, like took the stand and explained like how it works and all that and why that Snapchat was from that time and all this stuff. The same thing would have happened in regards to the Vivens. Exactly. And it was August 9th that he looked up the prices for an Audi Q7. Wow. And it was 2107 hours and it, or no, let's see, 20, 45 hours he logged into Instagram and then it, it looks like a Z, but I think it meant to be a two 2107 hours. He searched Google for prices on Aldi's, but you're so right. Like thinking of Snapchat and 
not trying to gear off topic, but like Chris did have Snapchat to my memory. He had Instagram. He had Facebook. Like it would have been fascinating to know what data was in those apps. Yeah. And even the aspect, like you just said, that he had logged into Instagram, they they would have furthered into that inquiry and been like, what images did he look at? Whose profile was he looking at? You know, like all that would have been laid out and, and explained or at least dug into, you know, and we don't, we have only scratched the surface of so much more that has been kept under wraps that nobody really even thinks about, I feel. And, and all that kind of matters when you think about like what his mental state was at that time. Like, who is he looking when he's logging into Instagram? Yes, I think all of that would have been fascinating and very relevant to to see and know. And like you said, it would have all come out in the trial. Yeah. And again, I, I think the question, like why things were being stated as carried them out like garbage, I think that comes right around to the manipulative lying district attorney in this case, because he started all that. Dispatch Frederick 988. Can you log 528 Zebra John Victor? And is this the first time we're seeing them look in the Lexus? Like, I just feel like once again, like that's another thing. Like what if they had been in the floorboard or in the trunk of the Lexus? Yeah, I don't understand. And I believe, yeah, you're, you're right. That this is the first scan over um, unless it's in footage that we've never been given, you know? Right. But yeah, from what we know, this is the first time the doors are kind of being opened and looked in the back. Like, why, as soon as we seen Chris open the door to the garage when he showed up after he shook the officer's hand, he goes directly to the passenger side of the Lexus. But yet it's taken all day because this is after they've come back with that search warrant that he signed, right? Yes. Yeah. So, um, Bomb Hover has left. Chris signed, went on a walk with his protein shake, and now they're in. And again, no gloves. Yeah, good point.
even better. It seemed like he felt maybe it was damp, possibly. Yeah, the way he's doing that's interesting. Like, it wasn't like he just grazed his hand across at one time and was like, nope, dry. You know, right. sort of it's like he was seeing how thick it felt, too. Like, when you touch how damp something is, you know what I mean? Yeah. And you could when it kind of start when he started over there you could hear him kind of sniffing in like to smell something too and of course anyone would kind of do that as they're looking through things but i wonder what his notes were like did he smell anything there yes they did doesn't NK say what, one of the times she went to the house, Chris was doing the carpet with the carpet cleaner? Yes. And that the carpet was wet. He had moved the furniture off of it. So, yes. And they definitely own a vacuum as well. So, yep. And, you know, I, in my opinion, everyone's is going to be different. I'm curious actually what yours in, in chat would be. Um, and replay viewers comment below. If I had a basement, I feel like that would be because I've had I don't have one currently, but I've been in places with one. That's usually the area where that things get like a little like disheveled. Like I'm like kind of very neat. Not as much as the Watts, but almost like a step below it. <laughs> like people, like my mom says, is it always this clean when, or all the time here? And I'm like, yes. <laughs> but I feel like the basement, if anything was going to be in disarray, it would be, it would have been like the basement area. And the fact that like, the, uh, if it, they had like a room that was their like throw all. And right. The, the office has that important information, like the life insurance stuff password notebooks you know what i mean post-it notes doctor stuff you know so the fact that that looked like it had been like frantically gone through like that's it's always going to stand out as like a red flag to me i agree and i definitely see your train of thought with that like for me i live in an older home i have a garage but we don't park in there and I mean, Amber knows I'm always like, I'm trying to clean my garage again. I've shown her pictures of it. Like my house stays picked up pretty clean, but the garage is our catch all. So yeah, I'm with you. Like you're not spending a lot of time in the basement per se. So I'm with you. Like it would make more sense if there was a throw all or a catch all, whatever you want to call it. It would be the basement. The office to me, I'm with you is always going to be a question mark and a red flag. And chat is a green too. So it just, it's an eerie aspect in the case that, that office. Nothing. They are really organized people. And this isn't even the first guy who has said things like, oh, very clean for having kids or this place is immaculate or this guy just said it again, very organized people. So when Coonrod said nothing's kind of out of place, like I, I disagree without, you know, no disrespect or anything. I'm just saying like, for the most part, it seems like people were very alerted that the office and the office closet, because I think both things kind of are interesting, um, were very much 
not like the rest of the house. And okay. noted by multiple people. Yes. And you're so right. Like they have said more than one person has noted the organization, the cleanliness, like even, you know, with having kids, it's very clean, but then they go into the office. And in my opinion, a note should have been written. Like this is a little out of the ordinary when you're looking at this large home and it's literally the only room. And like you said, that is where the important details would be found bank information, like personal information, et cetera. Even information about the value of their home. Like say there was talk of that. We already know they were going to sell it and stuff, but like if other people are involved and they want to know, like, you know, all that financial stuff could be interesting and valuable, even for people who were involved in the crime to know, you know what I mean? Like, it Definitely. goes so much deeper than maybe it was looking for pass. It very well could be something like looking for the password to her phone. But I'm like thinking even more like how much. And we know that NK talks about like his credit score and his 401k information. And she knew that they were in debt, but she didn't know it was that bad until the media. And it's like, where did she get all this information? Just speaking to Chris or was it she had done her own deep, deep dive somehow? But everything's like super organized. They're really organized. We got a lot of stuff. Oh, it's a nice house. And even still, um, like Lambs Bond said, I'm not trying to harp on it, but this case was mishandled if it was brought up in the courts and so many different levels. Like right now, even this guy looking with the flashlight, no gloves still. I don't know if it's the same guy or just somebody else there with him, but it's kind of puzzling to me. Yeah, and I completely agree with if Chris had not taken a plea deal and this had gone to trial, this would be a defense attorney's dream. And I'm not saying that I love defense attorneys and, but I do believe in a, you know, a process of justice. And I do believe that this case would have been a huge learning experience of what not to do when you are on day one of a pregnant woman and two babies missing. And from a defense aspect, which we've seen in so many cases, the way that the scene is handled and who was standing where and who had booties on their feet when they walked around. And like we we've seen it in other body cam footage too, like things getting roped off and somebody, an officer telling another officers don't step there, stay on this side, you know, like you don't see any of that here. There was no direction by even when Detective Baumhofer shows up of like, can the children maybe wait in the driveway or like, um, you know, somewhere else. Like, I know that Nick's would have been able to handle his little sister. I know she was a toddler at the time, but I think that it would have something could have been done if things were directed appropriately. And then even these officers showing up like you, you come over with a search warrant, but you don't have gloves on. You know, it's just kind of like, so then what, what is the point in whatever you would have found or what you did find in this court um, approved search order or search warrant, you know? Right. Because, yeah, without gloves, I mean, it's contaminated at that point, even with how they bagged up the sheets that belong to the girls, they put them into plastic bags and co-mingled the sheets. What is that guy? I love Joseph Scott Morgan. Um, yes, 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 yes. I love him. And he forensic was, or expert. Yes. He's talked on many cases. And first of all, he thought NK 
was shady. He talked to Ashley Banfield about that. Um, and then, yeah, he said that that is not the way you collect evidence, blankets. You put them in paper bags and you do not mix them. So, again, that just is another example of something that would have been brought up in the courtroom. Yeah. And he didn't want to tell the truth, too. Like, yeah, like like Johnny said, he copped a plea because he did he did it. Plus he knew the truth would be shown. Like he for sure would have gone, you know, even as like a co-conspirator, like you're spending life behind bars pretty much, you know, whatever took place. I just don't think it's the narrative that the district attorney tried to lay out or whatever the defense was going to pull up because we do know a little bit of that strategy in the prison interview that we've gone through. And that definitely wasn't going to be leaning towards the truth either. It just is so much deeper with, you know, the phone forensics and the security footage and the security system. It's just crazy. And then then we throw in what the defense team would have said to these officers. Like, did you process the scene appropriately? Did you put the bed contents in the right type of bag? What type of bag did you use? Here we have a photo in the media of you carrying it out in plastic bags. Is that the appropriate way to handle, you know, evidence? And it just obviously was not going to go in, in the district attorney's favor, in my opinion. Um, and it's just to get a conviction somehow <laughs> for whatever reason, Chris decides that was the route to go, even though, you know, it's, it's so much more, you know, it's so with secrets and all that. We just, we don't know what it even would have been the truth laid out in, in the courts, you know? Kind of weird that there was like a blanket thrown in on the trampoline area in the basement. Yeah, the trampoline, I feel like at one point I had thought it moved overnight. But then when I went back and rewatched, there is some officer who like shuffles or moves the trampoline, I believe. But yeah, I do think like it's interesting to look at what is on that trampoline. Every I look at every little thing, you know, and I'm fascinated by it all. And to see the way that everything was in a place that it belonged, to see some random throw blanket on top of the trampoline, it's to me, knowing the way that their house looks, it doesn't look like the spot that they would usually have that. Agreed.
looked at the sheets and the comforters. I don't see anything. It's kind of odd. Nothing's on the bed, though. Yeah, so he does know that it is odd that there's nothing on the bed. Yeah. And at this moment, we don't have anyone who's, like, really checked the attic. No. It was like we found it like this. I looked at these. There's no. He said when he left, she was in bed sleeping. In bed sleeping. Mm So I just don't believe that she was in bed sleeping at that at when the last time he saw her. And if that's the case, then that's red flag that it's stripped down the way it is. And and like Tony said, sometimes I feel like I don't feel Shanann even made it up the stairs. Like we know she made it up because of her watch. But if she took her watch off, you know what I mean? Then she could have definitely gone back downstairs or something. You know what I mean? Yes. Exactly. Now, I believe they're on the floor. It's been debated was one of the nitrile gloves. He said when he left, she was in bed sleeping. Near the pillows, like a, a bluish, purplish one or something. Yeah, it's definitely been debated, but I just don't think that we can tell 100%. Like, we can't totally rule it out. And the fact that there was 100% one on top of the refrigerator leads me to believe that it is very possible that this was the second one. Yeah. And I believe when you just search nitrile in the, in the discovery that it's, I think it's more than just the one on the fridge that was found, but we'll, we'll have to look at that. Um, and know for sure, but there was something else I wanted to show you guys in the discovery too, which kind of goes into like Shanann and her clothing and all that. Again, still no gloves. Shuffling through the, the, the last spot that the husband says that he's seen her at was the bed. You know, that's an important piece of like the puzzle or the storyline for each side, the defense and the, de and, you know, prosecution. And if they can't even have a situation where they're confident with like how it was handled at that moment. Like, so it would be like the defense would say, that's the last spot that my client says that she, he saw her. Like, we're not sure what happened after that point. It's like, okay. And then the defense would call this um, guy up and be like, did you touch the whole bedding that, you know, we said that that was the last spot. How do we know that someone didn't come in there and, and take her? You know what I mean? You touch this whole area without gloves on. It's just not a good situation for this to have gone to trial. So, you know. Agreed. Good night, Seth. I hope you have a good night. Good night, Seth. And yeah, everyone was kind of noticing no gloves and that they believe that, yeah, there was a glove in the bedroom. We'll, we'll look into that on the next one, the glove aspect, because I know that in this body cam footage, we find out about the one on the 
refrigerator, but back to, you know, her clothing and how she was found in a shirt that was different than what shows her on the Vivint camera. I just wanted to show in the discovery how um, Shana, he states that when he'd last seen her, when we just heard the officer say that he last saw her in bed. Now here he's saying um, that he had last seen her and she would be wearing a black or gray t-shirt and no coincidence. I just realized too, like this, in, this was always interesting, but yet in the Vivian camera footage, she's wearing a black and gray shirt, you know? So I was speculating, like, does this mean that that was the last time that he'd seen her like was that footage the last was he looking at his phone and seeing she got home did he ever even see her in person because i don't know if i believe this whole the last time he saw her she was in bed right i go back you know i go back and forth so much on what i think happened um i do think like the wasn't there some glitter and an eyelash or something on a pillowcase like that would have just been another interesting thing. Like, did they test that alleged eyelash? I don't know. I go back and forth. I definitely, I, I lean towards like, she didn't make it in bed and rest. Um, I don't think like they, there was sleep that night. Yeah. I, I, I think I'm on board with you there. Uh I feel like that's a good spot to leave and then we'll dig into um, more in the future episodes, but I'm just looking at chat and yeah, people were saying the bedding was not, was put in plastic bags that is not done. And it has to be paper. Yeah. That's a huge problem. Would have been called out for sure. Shanann locked the child proof latch when she entered. And when Chris led the officers through the front door he had to unlatch it. I think Shanann was the last person to open that door. Eerie. And yeah. Mm -hmm. And just seeing, I don't have the, it's in my documentary somewhere, but that image, I know it's in our Facebook group. So that's the thing is guys, there's photos in there that like are interesting. It shows Shanann's flip flops. And remember like the pattern that they were like when she, when it was like shown on the body cam or whatever, they're like in like a stepping position. Yeah. So it wasn't like she walked through those doors because hold on, let me rewind the, the um, camera footage that we have. Allegedly, because I know people even go down the rabbit hole that that Vivint doorbell stuff isn't even that night. But. So this. I, what were we saying? Sorry. I just wanted to pull this up. <laughs> um, about her flip-flops. Oh, yes. And, yeah. Sorry. Thank you so much. Sorry, you're welcome. So, like, people had always said that she looked like she was on a mission when she's walking up to this door. Like, she looks upset. Like, pe we've we've taken screenshots. We even have one right now. And it looks, you know, like she's got her phone in her hand. In the body cam, you see, like, it's not like she walked through the front door, took her flip-flops off, and, like, set them over to the side or neatly had them by the front door. You know, it was, they were in like a stepping walking position, just like, it's just very, very eerie, but interesting to look at because it seems like there was about to be a confrontation possibly. Right. And that's the thing. Like, I wonder so much if she walked in, went straight upstairs, didn't see Chris. Did she go down to the basement? Like what happened? <laughs> and okay. Remind me real quick before we go about her watch. It did say she climbed a flight of steps, but then that was it. Right. Yeah. I think it stopped tracking. Like once it stated that she was upstairs. Okay. And like you said, that could either mean that she stopped upstairs or it, her watch was taken off or whatever. Because the watch was found, right? Yes. Okay. I believe so, yes. Beside and her bed? I'm not sure. See, that's the thing. Another reason why we're going through all this stuff. Like, Wait. these details have slipped my mind, but they're very, like, important. I feel like maybe, again, 
I feel like there was something where the watch was not found the first day and then was found later, but we'll have to refresh on that. I think so too. Yeah. Um, the Facebook group, I can link it again in chat, but it's linked in the description box. And it's just about this case. It called, it's called Chris Watts did not act alone with a question mark. And yeah, we'd love to carry the discussion in there. But this right here, you know, it's just interesting because the whole watch aspect, say she was changing and took it off and she changes her shirt, you know, because we know that she's found in a purple shirt with a heart that says love on it. And that's not this shirt. It's like a different one, right? It's like purpley. Yeah, I think what she was found in didn't match this. Yeah. And that is in our Facebook group too, like the, the pictures of all that. And that is found in um, the Sorry. discovery also, I believed, but it's just um, an aspect that makes you wonder, like maybe the watch was taken off and then it was hidden because that's the other thing too, is like, if you have an Apple watch, you can access text messages in there as well. Yes. Good point. So I think that that was always something that like we kind of kept as a possibility that maybe he was trying to get into her watch too or something, but. Um, now I don't mean to interrupt you, but okay. You're since fine. she changed her iPhone password, I don't have an Apple watch, but would it change the watch password as well? No, like she would have a separate one, but all her texts would be going there too. Okay. Could they text from that? Yeah. So that makes me wonder because that's always, I have felt like one of the biggest factors that kind of caused the plan to fall apart is that they could not pose as Shanann with her phone because she changed the password. Chris didn't know it. But now I'm like, if they had access to her watch, why wouldn't they just text message people from her watch instead of the phone? But maybe she did change it on her watch too. Yeah, I wouldn't be like, surprised. Yeah, I could see her if she's like, okay, I'm going to do my phone password. Now I'm doing my watch. Like I could see her being like having that thought process, like not just do one. I'm doing them both. Yeah. And yeah. Um, if you guys know anything more about the watch stuff, comment in the comments and then we can refresh. And like specifically if you have like a page number too of like the discovery or something. Um, but yeah. And then real quick, I was just, I Googled shirt or not Googled, but I searched shirt in the discovery and it does say a purple and white cotton t-shirt with silver peace sign and heart design. So, and then a bra. So that's a whole nother conversation. Like what was she wearing a bra to go to bed? And then there's debate. Well, I never wear a bra to bed. Well, I do. She was pregnant. Maybe that's why, like, that's, it's just, we'll, we'll never know, but I will always want to discuss it because it's just absolutely horrible that it happened and it's just frustrating. And even, you know, the style of underwear that she was wearing, you know, that yeah. that's not really, I'm, I'm about to go to bed. I'm exhausted. I just flew on a plane. Like I want to, you know, it just strikes me as odd that he states always that they were sleeping and that's what she was sleeping in. And it's like, no, I don't think so. She never made it to bed in like my gut. Maybe something took place on the bed because we know sheets were missing and all that. But I don't think like you said that it was ever, she was asleep. Right. And I'm just thinking out loud, like maybe she did go upstairs. You know, he has mentioned before she likes to get the airport off of her. Um, Maybe she just went upstairs quickly, just put on a new shirt, new pants. Were the pants the same? I can't remember. But yeah, and then sat on the bed and there was confrontations going on. I don't know, but. Yeah, that's the thing is there, she didn't have, there was no pants. Like they, these are the okay. last pair of pants that she's ever mentioned to have ever seen in. But she was found with no pants. Right. Mm, wow. And, and Chris says like here on this page or whatever, that the last thing that, or well, I don't want to misquote it, but yeah. pretty much I asked Chris how Shanann was dressed and he said she was wearing black or gray t-shirt and blue underwear. 
So mm -hmm. one of those things are right in regards to how she was found. And that's just the underwear. Right. He doesn't even mention bra either. Yeah. And then, oh my goodness, once they're at prison, speaking to Chris, Tammy puts so many words in his mouth regarding like if they were intimate and like, does she keep her bra on? Like, you know, like she fed him the scenario basically. Mm -hmm. In my opinion. <laughs> yeah. And when we were playing the Vivint video earlier and it, Tammy was there, I was just, I'm holding back because there's still time, a lot of time to get into Tammy and we're just mm -hmm. not there yet. And, but she just, oh my gosh, she irks me so much. Like when it comes to what method she could have used or why specifically she chose to feed him the answers, you know, it's just all very like sketchy to me. Yeah. And frustrating. <laughs> yes, I agree. And then I was watching Tammy, like, I know that it is recorded, but I just noticed when he was going over all those different times and alerts, I didn't see her take any notes. I don't know if I missed it, but I would think that that would be something like you would want to get noted and like really try to process, but she's just kind of like, uh-huh, uh-huh. Like, mm -hmm. get, get, get out, get through it, please. <laughs> it's just all so odd. I know. And it, it almost seemed like she was trying to get him frustrated. Like when she kept asking, like, and that goes to her phone, like and all this stuff. And he's like, should be on there. Yeah. And here it is in Discovery. So I asked Chris how Shanann was dressed and he said she was wearing a black or gray t-shirt and blue underwear. Um, Shanann was found wearing a purple gray t-shirt, black bra and blue thong underwear. Yeah, so it's like, how? why is his recollection almost saying that he'd seen her in this shirt, black mm -hmm. or gray? But then he got the underwear color right. So that to me yeah. is interesting. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it, yeah, it's you guys let us know your thoughts on, on the T-shirt aspect and his statements and all that and why some of what his description was was accurate. Um, and any other thoughts, but I think at this point we're good on examining this because it's very like frustrating to kind of go through all these questions because there's a lot of them. But like I said, join the Facebook group and the TikTok that Kelly has. She covers true crime and Watts on TikTok too. So she will condense into, because I think the, the longest a TikTok can go is what, three minutes? Now it's 10, but I haven't done any that long. Yeah. Wow. See, yeah. I never get on there, but she's on there, guys, and she'll be able to kind of, you know, give her interesting thoughts on cases there. So I'll link that again. It's also in the description box, her YouTube and her TikTok. And yeah, thank you again for coming. And I hope we can do this again um, next week before the holidays, but I know yes. things get crazy really quick, like the days leading up. So thank I'm you. I'm pretty Robert. available. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm not going anywhere for Christmas or anything. So just let me know. Okay. Well, we'll talk soon, of course. Yes. And we will be um, talking, of course, and private chat and all that. So <laughs> thanks for being here and everyone in chat. Thanks for being here. I'm like delirious now. I'm like exhausted going over this body cam. But... <laughs> yeah. Thank right, you yeah, everyone. Thanks for having me. Bye everyone in chat. We appreciate you guys so, so much. Yes. And we'll talk soon everyone. Bye.